Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with RackN. Uh, I want to share a presentation we did talking about what RackN does. Uh, this presentation is focused on Edge, but it, it talks about infrastructure and, and the problems that RackN solves in a very general way. So hope you'll spend about 15 minutes with me uh, and, and hear not just what we do, but why. Uh, I do have a video running in the background, so you can watch me give the talk as well as listen to it. Uh, hopefully that'll add some excitement and interest for you. Uh, End of the day, physical underlay automation, what RackN specializes in, is data center plumbing, which doesn't sound very exciting. It's, it's something that most people don't see, don't spend a lot of time thinking about it. They just expect it to work. And to me, that's a good comparison for what we're trying to accomplish because plumbing isn't simple. Uh, this is a picture of a jet engine, which in concept is very simple. It takes air, heats it, and compresses it to create thrust, but the actual implementation of a very reliable, uh, manageable, efficient jet engine is complex. There's a lot of plumbing that goes on that we never see, don't think about, unless we happen to be designing jet engines, which is exactly what RackN has been doing. We've, we've taken the physical layer of the data center and really rethought how it should operate, done it intentionally from the bottom up. And so when we work from the bare metal up, it really causes us to think through how we're going to solve data center problems at that foundational layer. In a lot of cases, we've taken cloud and we've, we've started at cloud and just you know been very effective doing API-driven infrastructure, but never thought through how do we actually translate this down into that physical layer. And then more importantly, done it in a way that didn't require you to use specialized hardware that only works uh, in for very, very limited circumstances. So what Rackin has really wanted to do is, is build this infrastructure automation, this software from the bottom up, starting with the networking layers, compute and storage, so the, the real fundamental bits and pieces that work. But to do that well, you have to manage the firmware that runs on all of them. You have to be able to install operating systems and a variety of operating systems. We can't just be limited to one vendor or one type or only the newest to solve this problem in an effective way. It has to work for everybody, everything that, that's been built and is being built, ARM and Intel, um, you know, the new, next generation that's coming. And then we have to be able to put platforms on top. So we have to be able to work with existing DevOps tools like Chef, Pop, Puppet, Ansible, Salt. And we have to be able to install Kubernetes, OpenStack, things like that. Things that, that actually you know, get used at the end of the day are the abstractions that most people interact with. And if you think about the stack, we're really delivering the abstractions that people want to be interacting with. And then everything below that we're managing in a consistent, repeatable way. And so we think when we look at this, that there's a lot of room for innovation in this space, that what we're automating is before the virtualization layer, that it's happening without needing specialized hardware and it's without requiring you to move to the very latest protocols. So if you still use Pixie boot um, and traditional legacy BIOS, that's fine. It doesn't have to be Eufy and iPixie or Oni or something that you haven't heard of. Uh, to make everything work. It has to be able to work across the board. And while there's a ton of systems of record and, and existing infrastructure in that, solving that problem in a consistent way is the heart of what innovation is about. And when we deliver this, it's not a SaaS, it's not a managed service provider. We're not trying to take over operational control for people. This is full lifecycle automation. So from first unboxing the machine to managing it, upgrading it, patching it, through self-managed software where it's the operator doing that work so it's not managed somebody else is doing it for you we expect to empower operators our goal is to make things simple enough that you don't want to give up management that you don't need a service provider and importantly for us it's delivered on premises that premises could be a colo it could be an, a telco closet it could be a, a retail store uh, the idea here is that it's not something that that you have to go to somewhere else to get you get it where you need it and this isn't fantasy or roadmap or, or software that we want to build. It's software that we have built, that we've shipped to enterprises, and we've built it for the edge. And the edge is important here because at the end of the day, every data center looks like an edge. It looks like something where you need locality, where you need automation, where you want autonomy. So when we think of edges, we're talking about thousands of sites. Today, data center operations tools have predominantly built for small numbers of sites, one or two, sometimes 10, if you really stretch it. Uh, and at that point, they start to run out of gas from a management perspective. And when we think about edge, uh, thousands, 
And edge, we're going way past 100. We're going into 1,000 or thousands, tens of thousands of sites. It's a totally different scale problem than anything we've been building for in the past. And that's important because operations becomes the bottleneck for scaling. When we talk about something operating at that number of machines or sites, it's not even machines, it's sites, then managing that has to be completely autonomous. It's out of human scale. And that operational problem is the bottleneck. And I want to put it in dollars and cents. So if I have a thousand sites and it requires, and they're all remote, and it requires me to interact with each site and I have to have an operator log in or worse yet have to have a truck go out to that site to fix something or a cable. Think about a cable, cable sending a vendor to your house to patch the modem. Uh, that's going to cost thousands of dollars every time you touch that site. Could be tens of thousands to make that actual operation occur. And then the coordination on top of that. And if you have thousands, a thousand sites with a thousand dollars per update, that's a million dollars per update. A Kubernetes patch, a firmware patch, machines that aren't being reliable and you have to fix your fleet, a f uh, firmware uh, insecurity or vulnerability, a TLS certificate that expires and have to be updated. That's a million dollars to make that one change. We have no choice but to make this automated because we can't then batch these and hope to do them every year because they're too expensive. We have to reduce the cost to almost zero so that we're making patches and updates continuously. That's what we've learned in the last 10 years of cloud operations. Continuous small operations, small changes are much safer, more resilient, and cheaper than doing it in batches. If we don't do this, our entire infrastructure is a Jenga tower. It's going to be unstable, hard to fix, hard to maintain. It's going to look exactly, frankly, like what IT looks like today. And that's exactly what, this, what we're talking about. Fix the foundation of your stack, the physical layer, that has to work well. And when that works well, everything you build on top of it is going to be more effectively managed. So how do we do this? We fix the root causes. We actually deal with the hardware and firmware, BIOS patches, security, boot protocols. We don't try to change them. We work with what we have. And then we enable reuse. So our whole design, our whole paradigm is how do you take one thing that works in one data center and make it work in every data center? Because that is the core to scaling your systems. And it's not reused just across all of your data centers, your 10,000 of them as we get into the larger scale edge, but across all of our customers too. So that when we fix a problem for one type of server, we can roll that out to all of the people using that type of server. And in many cases, fix all of the servers because of the way we've decomposed the problem. And that means that we've assumed the systems are heterogeneous. We are not assuming that you have to conform to our designs and our architectures. We're assuming that they are different from the start, that there's different hardware vendors and operating systems and BIOSes and RAID configurations. Those differences mean that we are also planning for the future because we know that the future systems will be different. And then, most importantly, we found that this isn't about doing one thing. It's actually about connecting a whole bunch of operations together into an integrated workflow. And I want to take a minute to explain what that means, because this is really the heart of what makes RackN software special. Because we're not assuming that you can just provision a machine or patch its firmware or install an operating system or install a platform like Kubernetes on top of an existing operating system. You have to connect all those pieces together because when they're different, they're different all throughout the stack. It's not neatly bundled up where all of your differences between sites are just in one small location. They're actually woven throughout your network, compute, storage, platform, IP ranges, naming conventions, geography. It's all different. So we have to be able to integrate these things together. And so the idea here is that we are, we are able, with rack and software, to connect the dots in your infrastructure. That we can actually put them together in a way that allows you to connect one piece of information to the other one set of changes to the next one down the, the pipeline in, in a smooth, continuous uh, infrastructure. And these aren't just one API or one system. The idea here is that what RackN provides handles several of these completely and then integrates to the other ones in a very smooth, seamless way. So when we've built this, what we've done with RackN is we've built this cloud-native infrastructure 
Uh, and it's exactly what you would you would want to see, right? We've rethought how data center automation. So it's a tiny footprint. It's a single multi-platform Golang binary, which means it can run on switches, on Raspberry Pis, on uh, machines themselves, on laptops, wherever you need it to run. Um, it's restful, of course, and event-driven. It can run autonomously, even in an air gap mode where it doesn't connect to anything in the outside. And, and that, as a starting point, has been very important because we aren't managing this infrastructure. It has to be able to run when it can't connect to anything else. And most importantly, from an operational perspective, it has to be fast to learn and simple to manage. If we solved all these problems but made it complex and confusing, that would not solve our thousands of sites uh, management problem. It, in fact, it would become too onerous because of the complexity. So we had to start with simple, and we did. And I keep jumping to the last slide, sorry. So what we're talking about here in the actual functioning of the system is pretty straightforward. Rack and software manages provisioning protocols like DHCP, PIXI, IPIXI, HTTP, the things that you actually need to bring machines online and, and talk to them and interact. We add agents. Uh, these are optional, but most of our customers find them incredibly helpful. Uh, that then can manage server switches and storage. These can be on the machines and devices or external using the machine's native APIs. And then we add plugins that can extend and talk to systems of record, that can work out of band on the BMC for the systems, can talk to infrastructure, data center infrastructure management or environmental controls. All right, so our Rackend software can be the hub for managing the disparate systems that you need at the physical layer. And then we've made it incredibly simple so that you can take this same model and then clone it into multiple edge data centers. That of course implies that we now have a management core where we connect all these things together so we can work at local, regional, or global scale to coordinate and synchronize all of the Rackend software sites across the infrastructure. Each one is autonomous but then centrally managed and coordinated so we can roll out changes in a, in a controlled way across a globally distributed infrastructure without creating a star and hub centralized bottleneck. Uh, our centralized management assumes that the systems are autonomous and distributed. Inside of that core, there's of course a content library that tracks CI, CD, system images, security, um, and manages the overall system in, in, a, in, a, in a library way so that everything's accessible. And of course, it has a strong RESTful API that enables management logging, self-service portal, and then has the same plug-in concepts with additional integration. So we can integrate to your configuration management, your data center information from a centralized perspective, and global IP allocation management. There's other integrations that we do. These are just a sample. And it's critical to be able to say, we don't solve every problem. We're not trying to build the Uber framework that controls every aspect of your data center. In every data center, there are unique, useful technologies that are already doing hard work. And we don't want to change those if they're working. We want to be able to work with the infrastructure that you have, the patterns and systems that you have. And we've done this. We are showing for our customers 10 times and larger ROIs based on server provisioning time, uh, speed of learning, overall performance of their physical underlays. This is a shipping product. Uh, and we encourage people to do self-service trials. We really like to let the software speak for itself, and you can go to portal.rackend.io to see it. Um, and then we're happy to talk to you about the, the things that customers have been doing to take advantage of this technology. And then we're working on the future, too. We're building foundations for edge infrastructures. Everything we've designed has been designed with edge in mind, and we're actively creating integrated capabilities, but not as a RackN becomes the edge provider of all things, but as RackN is part of an ecosystem who, of people who are interested in building edge infrastructure, managing edge infrastructure, writing applications for the edge, and building IoT frameworks uh, and platforms. I hope this has been helpful. RackN is really innovating at the infrastructure layer, and we want to share that innovation with you. If you have interest, please contact me. I'm Rob Hirschfeld, rob at rackend.com, or just visit our online trial. Take, take a look for yourself, and then get in touch with us when you're ready. Thank you.